Hi there YouTube, Musical Aviator here. It is Wednesday the 21st of August 2019. We are flying the Around Australia Tour, just a self-made event that isn't really an event, it's just me flying around Australia. And today we're going to be flying our Sesta 172 Juliet Kilo Hi November. YouTube. Musical Aviator here. It I can hear myself. Wednesday, where am I hearing myself? That's where I'm hearing myself. Cool. So, Cessna 172, Juliet Killer November. We'll be flying out of uh, Tumut today, up to Young. And the intention is maybe to continue on to Parks. Depends how we feel and depends on the weather, because today's weather, well, let's have a look at it. Young, showing showers of rain, wind from the west, gusting up to 25 knots, which is right on the limit of Cessna 172. Uh, from 0600 up to that's the same broken at 2500 uh, currently we're showing uh, broken at 1800 so uh, yeah that's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty tough the uh, runway down in uh, young today runway 01 so if we can uh, do the math on that 260 and 010 yeah, that's exactly 90 degrees to the runway, so we'll be uh, coming in with a perfect crosswind, regardless of which runway that we're using today. Given that, I do plan on using runway 01. And Park says more runways, but uh, yeah, the weather's not great up there either. Also, it's Wednesday, so midweek, we've been at work, it's a bit tiring, we might take the short flight today. Um, we have run this uh, flight once before on uh, Sunday. Unfortunately, my um, PC on that day decided that it was time to uh, sing the song of its people and give us lag, lag, and more lag. But with that out of the way, we will now move our aeroplane up to Young, at least, out of Tumut, so we can at least get out of the uh, Snowy Mountains area and onto the Central Western Plains. Now we have Australian Skywatch on the YouTubes. He has uh, popped in quite early and he says, I better like the video before he starts. So yeah, if you can, like the video or maybe wait till the end so you can decide if the video is worth liking or not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's horrible. Or maybe it's okay. So there are your comments. We also have Dan172 and Lachlan Boyd, who's just done his first milk on Monday. And any tips for future flights? Not really, just keep doing them and uh, yeah, enjoy. If you can get through a milk run Monday without making a fool of yourself, you're not doing too bad. And here we have Australian Skywatch also popping in to say that he's having some bad reception issues. Don't you love 4G when that's not working? Hi also to Simon Vett who's uh, popped in. And we're going to walk through the hangar today. Welcome to Tumut. Don't know what that thing is over there, but... Uh, Ah, there's a uh, very nice tool cupboard. Alright, so out the hangar into the uh, tarmac at Tumut. So as we all know, Julek in November, JKN is a Cessna 172. It uh, does base itself in Richmond RAAF Air Force Base at the uh, Flying Club over there. Many of the officers are able to uh, hire it out. Actually, anyone that's in the Flying Club, you don't even have to be a uh, RAAF serviceman to fly in the Flying Club. You do need to have a base access pass, though. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into Richmond anyway. 
Let's jump in and get ourselves an open door. All right, a full uh, pre-flight as usual. Gonna put the yoke on. Good, uh, sitting in the seat. Just got to turn on the battery, master switch, on it goes. With that on, I'm going to turn on the um, P-Dot heat. Actually, before we do that, we need to take the um, P-Dot off. P-Dot cover is off. All right. So, P-Dot heat goes on, and the flaps can go all the way out to 30 degrees. And switches are off. Let's do a walk around. Okay, build up probe is nice and warm. The boot is open so it can take the tie downs away. I see it's jumped off the tie downs. Cool, so with the tie down off, just gonna move the elevator up. All of the bits are nice and attached. And the trim tab, and that moves but isn't flopping around, all good. Hi there, uh, yeah, Australian Skywatch, using 720 mode. That's one of my old modes. I used to go back to like 320p or 360p uh, back when I was on ADSL. It's all I could manage. Can't even read dials. At least you can hear what's going on. Okay, tie downs and the wheel chocks are all way. Checking out our fuel drain. And up the top here we should see that we have about a quarter of a tank. Yeah, maybe about two thirds of a tank. Plenty to get to young. Yeah, it's 7 p.m. here in Australia. Two a.m. sounds like a um, Western. Ah, he's just staying up till 2 p.m. Yeah, Brisbane's the same time as us at the moment. Uh, propeller looks fine, no nicks, no cracks, and all of our air, air intakes are good, including that one right there, tiny little hole. Back up to the top of the aeroplane and we'll have a look at that uh, fuel, once again about two thirds. Last fuel drain, everything there looks good. Tie down is off. And there's nothing sitting in that uh, stall warning area. And the good old uh, ailerons look nice and happy. So does the flap. Now here's the trick to get from this position where we're standing behind the flap to the position when we're sitting inside the aeroplane there is this wonderful feature called a massive corner with not exactly a sharp edge, but it certainly is very, very hard. Now, if you were to duck your head in directly, I can guarantee that at one point you're going to get a big chunky mark right there on your forehead. So uh, my suggestion is to walk around the wing the long way to the wing tip and then enter from the front end of the wing from here so that you can duck under the struts without slamming your head into the flap. Uh, 
And with that info, we will open the window so we can shut the door. And here is you pull the door until you can put your arm through the window. Push your arm right down on the other end of the window and pull it towards you. Grab it and push that down. Ready to roll. Before we do that, I'm going to check the altimeter. We have 900 and a bit feet. Let's double check that off the, uh, the chart here. 863 feet. Down mod 72, going off to work at 3 in the morning. Off hour. <laughs> Checklist. Airplane weight and balance is checked. There's only two on board. Parking brake is set. Control wheel lock is removed. Engine ignition is off. That's all been done. The fuel quantity is good. Static pressure is on uh, standard. And that's how the switch will do that on the engine start. Uh, fuel selector valve is both. Cutoff is pushed in. Flaps are extended. Master switch is off. Elevator trim is set for takeoff. Okay, the engine start, we're looking for the throttle, master switch, beacon. I'm just going to move the uh, throttle slightly. Cool, it is a cold start today. I've got to leave the window open. Move my head down a little so I can see through. Get the stuff. With that. Master switch goes on. Beacon is in with the nav. What aeroplane am I planning to use for spilt milk run? I'm thinking Airbus, although Dash 8 is also an option. Twenty four point five and all of that looks good. Clear prop. Before we go to full, I'm just going to run the fuel pump. Two, three, four, five. Fuel flow showing five. That's cut off now. Lean it out a touch, and here we go. Easy. Gotta close the window because it's rather cold out there. It's also rather windy and the aeroplane is bouncing up and down. Avionics coming up. And we can hear each other. Beautiful. I cannot fly the A330 because I don't have one. When Aerosoft come and release the A330, then I'll be able to use it. But for now, I can't use a product that doesn't exist. So A330 is off the table. To it to young. Why, why, and G. We'll set that in. Go to the map. We are all pretty much ready to go. Got to run the 12 degrees Celsius out there. Very nice. So, two minutes, we have runway 35, we'll be uh, departing. Uh, there's a westerly breeze running at the moment. 35's ever so slightly the best. Once we get airborne, we'll be heading out uh, northbound, uh, following the two minute river. Where is my position in the map? Come on. Two minute, there we are. So, we follow the two minute river up until we uh, intercept the Murrumbidgee River. And then we continue northbound, pretty much. Uh, we may need to do some cloud dodging. I'm hearing about clouds down at 1,800 feet, 1,800. And uh, there's kind of a base of clouds sitting at about 2,500. So we'll climb as high as we can. With any luck, we can get up to 2,000 feet. Um, there are some mountains around that are higher than 2,000 feet. But if we stay inside the river valleys, we should be alright. There's another 2,000 foot mountain over there. 
So we may need to come quite a fair way west with the Murrumbindji River, head up past Harden. Uh, the difficulty is getting through Young Township. It's uh, 2,100 up there. So I'll just need to do a bit of scud running to get into, uh, into Young. Once we get into Young, we have a runway which is showing us a see airfield elevation is 1267 uh, remembering that 2500 is above the ground level so technically the clouds are actually to 3000 3700 any luck that stays that way anyway we're looking at a uh, cloud sitting around 2500 feet uh, the altimeter is set. We have an altimeter showing 1017. That is set. Hi there, Manuel Gabriel. Very nice. And Aerosoft has been saying that it'll release this year, but they said that last year as well, so who knows. Uh, currently showing 07, maybe 065. That's 076 or so. Seven, roughly there. All right, and it's runway three five, so I'll set that up there, and we're good to move. Two minute multicom, pre-tuned, one twenty six point seven. Also have one twenty four point four, Melbourne. Sorry, won't need to contact Melbourne Centre yet, but once we uh, do get up there, now I can. Uh, contact them for flight following if we need it. We may well need it because of the weather. There is an option that we might even need to go IFR and if that is the case we may want to have a look at uh, our low our airways. And um, there are no low airways. So be a direct to um, Young. That said we might even be able to pick up an IFR approach if we need it. Charts. Here we go. Young. Runway zero one. That's the last option. But hopefully we won't need to go to IFR, and we'll just uh, monitor ourselves with uh, Melbourne uh, Centre. With that said, it's time to start moving. Looking to the left and the right of the aeroplane, we've got nothing out there. Going to bring up the flaps. There they go. Just going to just push the head down a touch so I can see out the side of the aeroplane. Because I that's one of the things that I hate about Cessnas. It's just really hard to see out the side that you're sitting in. There we are. Alright, let's move. Traffic to it. Jelly Killer November is taxiing runway zero uh, second runway two five at Tumit, uh, departure to the north. Jilly Kilo, November. Go open up a new page just in case we need it with Melbourne Centre. Parking brake is off and we start moving. can just uh, point straight up there. Let's make sure we're not blasting anyone. So I'm going to tilt ever so slightly towards the runway. And we'll do the run up right about here. Before we go blast it off, let's check that fuel. That uh, oil temperature just a little bit under the 100. We'll just wait for a second. That looks to be at 100 to me. Let's move it up. Brakes are in.
17. That's what 18. 15, 16. 18. There we go. 8700 RPM. Let's go move the magneto left side. That's looking good. Right side. Also looking good. Everything there's good. Temperature's in the green. Fuel is set to both. And vacuum is in. Amp is on. Pull up. And engine settling at 600. 1000 RPM. Just going to check our test button. Test button is good. All right, checklist. Doo -doo -doo. Before takeoff, seats, seat belts, and doors. Uh, everything is secure. Just rock back in your seat. Make sure it's not going to move. Flight controls. Let's go have a look at the back of the airplane while we do this. That's working well. One good idea is just to look at your shadow. It's harder to see the shadow on the other side, but you should be able to. There it is. Okay, flight instruments are set. Fuel quantity is checked. The mixture is fully rich for the takeoff. Fuel selector valve is set on both. Throttle is uh, done. The mag checks are completed. A radio is set. Elevator trim is set. And the flaps are set for zero for takeoff. And one thing that we do want is the fuel pump set. Let's have a chat. Look out for the rabbit, says um, Scott Bennett. And you're right, there are probably lots of rabbits around here. The odd wallaby. And plenty of birds. Now it is a funny thing that I've seen birds sitting on the side of a taxiway like this one. And you fly with your wing right over the top of them. Not even in a high wing aeroplane like this, but in like a Piper Cherokee. There are like, maybe one foot away from the wing and they don't flinch. They're quite happy with that. <laughs> Traffic 2 minutes, Jolly Kilo November, entering a runway 35 to backtrack and departure will be north down. And landing lights on, tacky lights on, strobe lights on, every light that I have on the aeroplane is on. Hi there to Jeremy Sports. How you doing? This flight should be oh, less than an hour from now. Uh, there is a bit of weather about, so we might need to pick up an IFR clearance, and that'll slow us down if that happens. Uh, there is air traffic control. I'm not sure if we'll use it, but it's certainly there and we could do a flight following pickup. We might even do that since there's a lot of cloud around, so... Yeah, that change in texture, I don't know why it happened. It happened last week, last time we did the flight as well. But uh, there you go. 
Traffic two minute Juliet Killer November runway three five departing northbound via the two minute river. Juliet Killer November. Ah, uh, go the crosswind. Lots of rudder in there. Heaps of rudder in there. Never had to use that much rudder before on a takeoff, and I don't like it. There we go. Cross controls. Okay, oh, that's airborne. 75 knots on the way up. And we'll start that left hand turn. Yeah, we are on that, Tim. Where's the river? There it is. Keep that climb going. around behind there I do believe. Just checking left side, right side, all good. Truck two minutes, you'll kill November is passing uh, 2,000 feet on the climb. Um, heading northbound by the two river. Aircraft. Hmm, which aircraft do I really want in P3D? I wouldn't mind a long hauler that does shared cockpit. I know the Aerosoft A320 may well fit that bill, which I'm looking forward to. I'm not yet on Melbourne Slurry Control, but once we're outside of the control, the uh, CTAF area, then we'll do that now. Actually, we'll do it now. All good. Time twenty seven. Just need to keep climbing a little bit since uh, we're still cluttered in these hills. Once we're outside of the hills, we can uh, probably have a chat to Melbourne Centre. See you next. Catch up. Jeremy Sports. I have been a real part in the past, not currently active, but I do have a uh, student pilot license. You can see some of my previous flying adventures on this channel. Let's go to my channel page. There is indeed an autopilot in the Cessna 172, it's not a bad autopilot. Uh, I might even uh, climb the 4500 on it. And I'm going to use heading mode for the moment. So autopilot goes in, we run heading mode, and we've got a 4, uh, so again, 500 feet per minute climb, up to 4500. Certainly not easier to handle that on a part than it is the Piper Cherokee's one. If 
quite a bit of turbulence tonight. We've got a uh, wind out of the west uh, between 25 and 30 knot gusts. Uh, the other pilot might have a little bit of trouble actually handling this, so uh, we just need to monitor it. A lot of turbulence as well on these hills. I think it's worse than uh, Sunday when we flew down here. That'll be quite uncomfortable. So Young showing uh, 260 at 15 knots gusting 25. It does come down after uh, 0800, so that shouldn't be too bad. Parks is also up to 25 knots, also calming down. Yeah, you get uh, birds through windscreens a bit. I'm considering dumping the auto part since it's not managing to hold our altitude very well at all. We'll just have to handle this manually. Melbourne Centre, uh, Juliet Killer November, it's a Cessna 172, part of Tumit at time 27, uh, tracking too young, request uh, flight following. Clear Kilo November, Melbourne Center, Kilo Sport 3146. Sport 2 November, no report of the traffic for young. Just coming November, thanks for that. Uh, we are maintaining our 4,500 uh, for low clouds, situated roughly uh, 6,000 feet uh, in uh, medium turbulence. 2 week, Kilo November, thanks for the update. Yep, we're with air traffic control, they don't need to do much. Uh, if there was traffic around, they'd point it out to us, but there isn't, especially not down here at 4,500 out of Tumut. No one's flying around here in this bumpy weather. Um, we'll leave the autopilot off since it's just not managing to uh, hold pitch. At the moment, it's more important to maintain our pitch than it is in altitude, since we're in VFR anyway. Uh, we're just going to bounce around between uh, 4,400 and 4,600. More correct if it goes more than 100 feet above. Uh, apart from that, the smoothest way to ride out this kind of thing is just let the aeroplane flop around as it wants to, in my opinion. Uh, the landing will be windy. The landing will be that windy. It'll be 260 degrees at 15 knots with gusts up to 25. Uh, moderate turbulence, moderate to severe turbulence below 5,000 feet. <laughs> so, not fun. We might have to go around. If you go around twice, uh, we'll just continue on up to parks because the weather in parks looks a little bit better. Um, not much better, but at least the runway is uh, more into the wind. Uh, wind is 240 and they've got a runway 29 over there, so we can, or 22 even. Probably do that. Runway 22 into. Uh, to the wind. So the difference is uh, not so much the amount of wind or the direction of the wind, it's just that uh, at parks we've got a runway that points into the wind a bit, so we'll uh, use that if we need to. Uh, parks is 60 miles north of um, Young anyway, and there's also a radio telescope up there, so you know how it is. So that's our plan, we'll uh, pop on up to Young and if Young doesn't work out for us on the second go around, we'll head on up to Parks and use runway 22 to runway 01 and uh, give us a little bit less of a crosswind. But again, Aussie Aircraft's in 98, how are we doing? 
Ah, the turret is uh, clearing up a little. He says, almost uh, daring it to <laughs> break again. Uh, there's the confluence of the Tumut River and the uh, Murrumbidgee River. Murrumbidgee River goes down past Gundagai, which is that little township there. Gundagai has the uh, city to Melbourne Hume Highway going straight through it. There's a little, uh, there's a shack winding back to an old country track on the road to Gundagai. And the dog in the tucker box. And there's this tiny little old pub out of Gundagai. And it's got a little, I've seen it, little statue of a man with a dog. And the dog is sitting on a tucker box, which is a kind of lunch box that our uh, workmen used to wear to uh, carry around. Still do on building sites. Eventually it looks like a little tool bag, but it has your lunch in it. And the statue is not even life size. Uh, the dog is about yay tall, and the man is, uh, I'd say, he's about four foot tall. Made out of bronze. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that's been there since about 1850. So there was a Slim Dusty. That's a one Slim Dusty song. There's a track winding back to an old-fashioned shack along the road to Gabagai. Where the blue gums are growing and the Murrumbidgee is flowing beneath the sunny sky. There my mother and daddy are waiting for me, and the powers of my childhood once more I shall see. Then no more will I roam when I'm heading straight for home along the road to Gundagai. Well, nowadays, the road to Gundagai is the main state highway between Sydney and Melbourne. You get a lot of very fast traffic doing 100 110 kilometres an hour. So, I'm not sure about that being a romantic little country town, but it was once. Can I climb above the wind? Come on, Australian Skywatch. We're talking about a Cessna 172 here. It's unpressurised. Sinking barely climb at um, a thousand feet, in, well, can't climb a thousand minutes. It can barely do about uh, 500 a minute. Um, we've also got cloud with VFR, and those clouds are looking about 2,000 feet above me. So I reckon we can maybe push up to 5,500, but I really don't think we can go much higher than that. Remake of the dish. Yeah, sure. But why remake classics? Classics and classics. Unless there's some other aspect of the movie to make. Don't remake it. Make a different story about the same event if you want it. That there is the Hume Highway. I've spent far too many years of my life sitting on that freeway. Doing 110 on cruise control. I normally don't stop at uh, Gundagai. I normally push on through the Yass. Uh, Yass is the town just south of, well, west of Canberra. That's not Yass, by the way. Lachlan Boyd saying a different uh, route going from the Olympicari then uh, back towards the Hume at Wollandin. Not sure why you do that. I normally just stick on the Hume because, you know, you've got the cruise control going. There's no reason to keep come off the highway. Uh, the only times I'll come off the highway is if I want to do something else. Sometimes I go up to Kuma and stay, go up the uh, Snowy Mountains, but then I'll stay in Kuma for a night. I might do that one day, again. Last time we went by the coastline, um, up coming from city down to Melbourne, I uh, 
came off, went through Canberra, stayed at Cooma and then went down to uh, the lake's entrance area via a fun lots of place down there. There's tons of little airfield there. Get the name Now Scott Bennett drove through in 2008. I drove through in 2017 and 2018 and probably do it again in 2019. Actually no, I'm flying this time so might skip 2019 and do it next in 2020. So we'll be flying the 747 this time. Billy G. G. From PNG. Nice. How is the island to our north at this time of year? Yarram. Yeah, Yarram's not a bad place. A bit too um, close to Melbourne, to be honest. I probably did drive through Yarram, but I didn't really stop to think about it. Just stuck on the uh, Gibson Highway. Just kept on driving. Straight through from Bansdale without stopping. Bansdale to Melbourne. No stops. Have you got your sick bag? You might need it. Look at that wind. 20, 31 knots. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and it's bouncing around like heck. 21 knots now. A 21, 31, 21, the aeroplane just gets slammed around. That's why we're down at 100 knots. Uh, I don't want to go full speed, otherwise we'll tap that yellow. And we drop, drop or gain 10 knots in, in a second or two. Ah, oh, we're climbing too high. You know what? We might just continue that climb anyway. See what the weather's like up at uh, 6,005 or 6,000. So that George Killer November is advising we are attempting to climb to 6,000, uh, possibly 6,500 feet just to see how the temperature is up there. George Killer November, no quarter of reserve traffic for climb to 6,500. Then yeah, climb 6,500. George At least the clouds were a bit higher than we tried on uh, Sunday. Sunday it was raining as well. On the day, quite a three on the day, sitting there, but it went clear to Honolulu and... Scott Bennett saying he went to the Tamora Aviation Museum. Now that is a good one, idea. One, two, three, Melbourne, Santa Cana, Tamora. In fact, next time I go up with Arjun, which may well happen sometime next year, um, we might well go to tomorrow. Sounds like a cool idea. Uh, Aussie Aircraft 98 is asking, which one do I like better? Jump in November or Hotel Tanker Mike? Well, I've got to say, I kind of like Hotel Tanker Mike better because Cessna 172s are weird. Very strange aeroplanes to fly. Um, Three Euclid to Honolulu via this same plane now. Let that happen first. CD1 departure, runway 25. Climb by 6566 and departures with a 124 decimal zone. Would you, uh, hello, uh, Dixco, and Drew? The departure runway 25, climb by 6000, departure from the second, the, uh, squawk, column 3. 
Two three score three one six six. Block three one six six one uh, three. Shark YT, yes, it's very windy today. And uh, quarter three, we're holding uh, on our uh, The wind currently showing 33 knots, but it's changing quite a lot, as you can see there, up to 38 knots, back down to 35. Yeah, that's what we call it. Very three, bouncing. Heavy, take your right, Gulf, cross one six, Gulf, and then Gulf four, holding point, runway two five. Yeah, the tomorrow flying day is certainly something that I'd be interested in. Uh, taxi, yeah, Gulf, cross one six, right. Enough to coordinate uh, that with uh, one of the guys at Fly Hunt. I'll take a mic or for this thing. Save up a bit of extra cash. There we go, 6005. We'll sit here for a little while. Get closer and closer. Now I'll probably need to descend at about. 18 miles out. A little steadier up here, he said, jinxing it. And Lachlan Boyd asking the big questions. Why won't Foster anyone do it in the 11 for P3D? Uh, Quarter 3, continue taxi on Joel Fekka, holding quite runway too far. Am I planning to use X-Plane in the future? Well, the X-Plane question is related to the fact that Rotate Tim is making an MD-11. When they release that MD-11, I'm going to get it. It's for X-Plane. Yes, there is an MD-11 for P3D, but it's crap. That's not decent, it's crap. At least it's crap for those of us that have uh, grown up on PMDG. Nineteen, we'll need to descend soon. So I need to lose 5,000 feet, uh, so it's uh, 5 times 3, equals 15. Good old toll freight in the 737-400, yeah, why not? Set has disappeared on me. That's pretty. I was about to tell him that we were starting to set and cancel our uh, flight along anyway. Oh, so that Julie Kilo November is uh, descending out of uh, 6,500 for young, uh, and uh, we can cancel flight following Julie Kilo November. Okay, we already know the weather from the tap. It's uh, directly across the runway, 90 degrees, up to 35 knots with gusts in of 10 difference. So 10 knot gusts. Uh, it's going to be an interesting approach. Let's put it that way. In fact, the approach could end up going into parks, depending on how bad the approach is. We'll give it two attempts. If you do get on the ground, we'll probably stay here until Friday or Sunday. No, say Friday or Sunday because there's a possibility that I might go out on Friday night. Here in Melbourne on Friday, 
is an event called White Night. Normally it was uh, in the past it's been on February, in like mid-February, but they've changed it to August and uh, basically on Friday and Saturday night, uh, between the hours of about 7pm and midnight, there's a big light show happening in Melbourne. It's essentially the same as Vivid, just a little bit more localised and contained in just the CBD. It's a bit easier to walk around in Sydney. So there's a possibility I might be going out on Friday night to see that. If that does happen, I won't be flying uh, JKN up to Parks or Narendra, depending on how far we get today. And if that's the case, then we'll continue on on Sunday. Okay, we're going to uh, transpond, say again, VFR. And we'll switch over to the Tita Young Multicom. Okay, QNH is 1018. Set. Traffic Young, Juliet Kilo November is a Cessna 172 approaching Young from the south. Uh, currently 10 miles at uh, 4,000 feet on descent. We'll enter the uh, dead side of the circuit for runway 01, Jillikin and Vimba. Oh yeah, and uh, estimated time of arrival in the circuit is time 57. And back into the bumpy stuff. Whoever made that call to climb higher, you probably had the right idea. If we do need to go up to parks, we'll climb up to 6,500. We'll stay there uh, for the rest of the flight. We might even be able to use the autopilot up there. But for now, we're back in the bumpy stuff. And we are looking to... make two approaches into Young. So I can drop two minutes. Elevation is 1,250, so I can descend down at uh, 2,300 for the second. We'll stay at 3,500 until we arrive. Into the big bumpy stuff. Well, the nice easiest trip would have been made on two or three trains. That is correct. Seven miles out. Okay, runway is zero one. There's the runway heading there. Look to maintain 3,300-ish in the turbulence until we see the runway. We'll enter from the dead side and come around the crosswind, then the downwind. I believe I see the township and I see the airport.
Okay, 5-4, it's the current time frame. Probably about a minute early on our estimate there. Hmm, maybe not. We'll be on the downwind at the estimate. That's good. Traffic young, Gurley Killer November is on the dead side of the field. We'll be uh, tracking to enter from the crosswind at 2,000... Uh, 200 feet. Just kind of in there. Hi there, Aaron. Welcome aboard. It's just a rerun of uh, Sunday's flight that failed. Not so much failure this time. We had some air traffic control. They've left now, but that's all right. We're outside control of airspace again. Being a bit of a bumpy flight. This time the wind is 25 or 24, somewhere from the west at uh, 25 knots with gusts up to 35. No, it's the other way around. Um, 20 knots up to, I think it's 25 knots or 35, what it was. What was the gust wind? Twenty five, so fifteen knots gusting twenty five. park on the hard stuff today. Uh, with this amount of crosswind, which is 25 knots of cross, we'll need to uh, be weathering quite a bit into the runway there. 30 knots airs. Oh gosh. It's years we're on a downwind now. Traffic Young, Jolik in November is downwind runway. Uh, one nine up. Hey, did the old Sunshine Coast. I do hope you use the uh, good scenery by Fluky. Good stuff, that. That wind is just squirreling around today. And it's a, it's a uh, downward, I don't know. Okay, brakes, undercarriage, mixture fully rich. Pressure is good, fuel is set, temps and pressures are in the green. Seats in houses are secure. Then that is directly along the runway. It is ever so slightly a headwind for runway 19. We have swapped runways in the middle of a downwind. Great. That was say. <laughs> Young traffic, Jelly Killer November is base runway 19. to do a backtrack on the runway now. Cool. Track in 10 flats. Traffic Young, Jula Kill November is turning final runway one nana. Lachlan Boyd, I'm not sure yet, but it might be an Airbus going into Hamilton Island or it might be going into Mackay. I am still undecided. But it's definitely outbound to Sydney going up to the the Queensland Airports. 
out of Brisbane, sorry. <laughs> Sydney. So yeah, probably Brisbane to either Hamilton or Mackay. I'm thinking A320. Jetstar. Okay, there's all the flaps. That's about 500 feet above the fields. Runway is clear. And we have all the crosswind in the world. Got about a uh, 20 degree offset for the nose. Let's carry a bit of extra speed. Looking at 70 knots instead of the 65 that you normally do. This is uh, FTX version 2 with that massive hole before the runway. I'm guessing that hole's where the lake's meant to be. Can we do it? Keeping a touch of speed in. Floating. Wasn't as bad as I was expecting, to be honest. RPM to a thousand. We have eight PM. We'll do a uh, stop or we'll backtrack. Traffic Young, Jillikin November is uh, turning the backtrack runway one nana. Alrighty, 15 people watching. We are backtracking at Young. Who wants to go up to parks today or who wants to wait until Friday or Sunday? Cast your vote by commenting. to Mackay in the uh, 7-3. That's not a bad idea. I like it. Elijah wants to go to Parks. That's one vote for Parks. That's Aaron wanting Parks. Parks will probably only take us a little while. It's a 60 mile flight. Should get on the ground just before 9pm if we do it. That's Shark YT off to Parks. Australian is... I don't know what you're saying. Parks or not. Uh, there's scenery from Mackay Airport. Alright, everyone's saying yes to parks. No one said no to parks. So far. Lock on the parks. Yep, that's most of you guys watching live. Scott in as well. Alright, so we're off to parks. Yeah, back and break a set. Just gonna shut down and yeah, grab something from the airfield here. Before we do that, we'll need to switch the that off. One, two, three, four. Drop it. Just a quick one. OK, 
Okay, just need to visit the men's room over here. Thank you, sir. Cherry capital of Australia. They grow cherries here. So there you go, OZX Airport Young. Let's jump back in. I love how short this avatar guy is. He doesn't even touch the top of the wing with his head. Look at that. What a shorty. Okay then, let's shut the door. Let's go up to parks. Door is closed and locked. Engine is warm. Let's run a check. Okay, weight and balance is fine. Park and brake is set. Control wheel lock is removed. Engine ignition, avionics are off. Yeah, the other flaps are up. Last switch off. Elevator trim set for takeoff. That is done. Engine start, check it around. Auxiliary fuel pump is off. Repeller area is clear. And I'll open the window so we can shout outside. Navigation lights are on, but the landing lights are off. Strobe is off, pillow heat is off for the start. Flaps are attracted and we are good to go. Clear for up. And it starts right away. Let's get the window closed. Gonna go pilot heat. Don't even really need to do warp run up. Mags have already been checked. Gonna go on taxi lights and we'll head out to the runway. Traffic bucks, actually, we can't transmit yet because we don't have the avionics on. Young to Parks, the easiest flight plan in the world. We're scorking to uh, 1200. Uh, Going to go on to altitude reporting, set. Uh, we don't need to talk to our traffic control. We can climb up to uh, 6,500 feet, which is where I'd like to be. That's a quick squeeze at the map. We're here at Young, and we can climb up to 18,000 feet without talking to our traffic control. The aeroplane can't even go that high, so clearly. Looking for 6,005, that is set, and we'll start moving on quick squeeze at the takeoff check. Seat belts are fastened. Controls, they were working a second ago, I'll just make sure they still do. They do. Uh, fuel quantity. Still showing ever so slightly more than half a tank, which means we have about two hours of fuel on board for this fight, which will take less than 30 minutes. And uh, throttle is idle. 
right there is a set elevator trim is set uh, flaps are up we'll move out runway 19 for departure we are doing another flight we are going to parks everybody where the radio telescope dishes let's move out that's right I haven't put in the text yet we'll do that now Young to Parks, PKS, let's move. Now uh, there is some good quality scenery from Mackay. Um, it's in, linked in the, uh, in the calendar entry for, on that pack. Twice. Uh, it's average quality, let's put it that way. It's about as good quality as this. Here at uh, Young. Eight degrees Celsius. Entering runway one nine. Traffic young, Julia Kilo November is assessed to one seven two, entering runway nine, uh, departure via the downwind. And that's the hardest thing to do in a Cessna one seven two, is see past your own wing at the approaching aircraft on your runway. It's the least safe thing that you can do in a Cessna 172. Alright, we got our full mixture. Are we ready to move? Yeah, that's the one. AUFS. That's one that I've linked to in the calendar as well. 60 knots, 65 going up. Yeah, Lachlan, that's the one that is linked on that back. The AUSFS scenery from Mackay. I also have the Ant Aussie scenery for Hamilton Island. Starting the turn. Traffic Young, Jula Kilo November, Cessna 172 is climbing out of 2300 uh, to 6500 on the downwind, tracking northbound. Jula Kilo November. We say goodbye to the little township of Young, New South Wales. Hosting us for eight minutes. <laughs> okay, we estimate time 53, so about 40 minutes and we should be in parks. I'll continue to climb the airplane in manual mode until we get to 6500. We may well hit the auto park depending on how that determines is. Parks has the radio telescope, which was used to uh, receive the images from Apollo 11 back in 1969, some 50 years ago. July 1969. 
Uh, Orbix Global Vector messing around with elevation, that sounds quite likely. <laughs> That's certainly the kind of thing that it will do. I guess I'll need to have a look at it uh, quite carefully. I do see that um, someone on the Orbix forums has been putting out fixes for lots of air airports. So I'll have to look at that, see if there's uh, a fix for Hamilton Island. If not, we'll be heading off to Mackay with the rest of you guys. 4,007 isn't too bad. Those clouds look a little concerningly low. That will push on, see how that goes. Four thousand five hundred. Keep on pushing up. Antonopoulos to win the old QF9 out of Melbourne Perth. I did that for panic stations. Though I had to add, a, add an extra 9 because someone else was fine. <laughs> 99. Yeah, the good old MFSG. Not too bad to hear. The weather's calmed down quite a lot. Nice steady 33 knots there. I guess we're outside of the mountains now, so we're not getting so much uh, turbulence. In the hills, we're out in the western plains. Nice and flat. Fifty-eight Nordic miles to go. Now, once we get out there, we'll uh, trim the airplane out and then um, lean it up. We'll get ourselves the fastest performance that we can get out of the plane today. Uh, since the sky seems a bit smoother up here in the plains, no more mountains or mountain waves to contend with, no more turbulence quite happy to chuck along. Well, the part is going in. I'm going to grab our navigation node, 6,500. Arm the altitude. Altitude is set. At full power. Full power slightly to get 2400 RPM and 
EGTs coming out. And that mixture is coming out lean. The more you lead it, the higher the EGT should get until you hit the peak, and then it'll drop down and you'll lose a bunch of power, and then you just give it a little bit extra back into the peak. Just bring it back ever so slightly. peaked out. There's peak and we just go a little richer. We have a nicely leaned out Cessna 172 which I'm going to give full power again. And yeah, looking for about, oh we're at 110 knots. This thing is rocketing along. A hundred and ten knots. It's times like this that we miss the old Bonanza Vitao. Because that thing would have been rocketing along at about 165 knots, which is beyond the red. Beyond the red line in the Cessna 172. The old Vitao. extra 50 knots of airspeed. Meanwhile we're barely getting beyond 110 knots and we need to pull the power back a little bit just to maintain our uh, red line. One dot below the red line which is uh, 2400 RPM. So you can't spin the propeller more than uh, 2,500, Other otherwise bad things happen. Bad, bad things. Now tucked in the strobe. There's a little town, where is that? I reckon that'll be Grenfell. The itty bitty town of Grenfell. So, what happens in Grenfell? Things to do in Grenfell. Grenfell is a town on the Witten Shire of the central west of New South Wales. It's uh, 230 miles west of Sydney, close to Forbes, Cowra and Young. Has a population of 1,996. Daily connecting New South Wales train link service from uh, to Sydney via Bathurst and Lithgow. Oka Ark, farm tour. That's a thing that I'm aware of. That has an airfield, Oka Ark. So just outside of Grenfell on the main highway out of there. Probably around here actually. There is a tiny little grass airfield which is a licensed uh, landing area. It'll have a windsock and a bunch of ga gable markers out on grass. And that is a tiny airfield called Oka Ark. Uh, Oka Ark to uh, farm tours, so you basically go there and live on a farm for a while and become a farmer. And then I guess you fly a Cessna back home to Sydney. And it is the township of Grenfell. There it is, Oka Ark. If that's on the GPS, might be. There it is, OCA. There's Cow off on the other side. And 
the Lachlan Valley Way. So tracking north towards Grawin, G-R-A-W-I-N, or Grawin. Uh, the Henry Lawson Highway. That's not a road that I've travelled on. Yeah. A company selling an F-16. That'll be fun. So we're uh, east of the um, Henry Lawson Highway, which is the out there somewhere past those big trees. What's our estimate looking like? 45. So we'll be arriving there at about 8:45 p.m. at our time. So that's 20 minutes from now. 20 minutes out. From parks. Hello Jason, how you doing? We're about uh, maybe 20 minutes out of parks with the radio telescope. Not sure if the uh, scenery object for the telescope is working, I didn't check it, but I have had some issues in park scenery getting all the objects to show up. So we'll have a little bit of a weird hodgepodge of uh, the uh, scenery from OZX linked below and the uh, FTX version 2 scenery. Didn't have uh, time to test if the satellite dish is a. I'm assuming it is, but it's probably not texted. So it'll be a black satellite dish instead of a white one. The tiny little airfield of Oka Arc, Oka Arch, is out there somewhere. You won't be able to see it, it's a grass runway. Could be that piece of grass right there, for all we know, probably not. Could be that one. Who knows? High Priest 25. Thoughts on Microsoft 2020? Well, it certainly looks pretty, and I like that. I'm sure it's going to be another massive expense to repurchase all your PMDGs and your uh, MS Labses and your Majestics. Because as far as Microsoft creating a very pretty sim, I'm sure they can. As far as them making a very detailed sim with properly running air rack data and all that kind of thing, probably not.
Oh, this one, yeah, it's not bad. Flying over the United States, uh, going from Orlando to Washington. That sounds fun. Um, Friday night, ops this week on Sunday morning at about 10 in the morning is Phoenix, Arizona. So we're interested in coming to the old desert city. One thing that I wouldn't mind doing, maybe even, maybe even then, um, is flying into Victorville with the um, MBA. That'd be fun. Flying the uh, the old MD eighty two into Victorville. Just need to find a livery with half the American stuff, but all the American titles painted off or removed. That'd be funny. Fly that in. Yeah, I'm sure the scenery will be great. We're seeing wonderful. Anyway, there was wonderful uh, screenshots from uh, FS2020 or whatever you're going to call it, flight simulator. It'll probably might even be like one of those things that uh, that group that did um, Sim City. Now we so have Sim City like 2000, Sim City whatever, but then they re-released something just called Sim City without any actual title. So I'm just wondering if Microsoft might be doing that, uh, releasing a flight simulator called Flight Simulator. Okay, I'm starting to descent to get out of this cloud. I knew the cloud was lower up in um, parts. 2,500. Down to 2,000. Ah, I need to go down. Glad I've got an autopilot. It's not 1,051. CTF is on 126.7. Yes, Qantas will be uh, retiring A74 very shortly. Unfortunately, if you want to fly Qantas 747 to Victorville, you're going to be spending 14 hours in the sky, which I don't really want to be doing on live stream without air traffic control. But if I was to fly, say, from Dallas Fort Worth to Victorville, that might be a bit easier. Of course I didn't get told about MFS uh, 2020. Microsoft just announced it. Why should they say, hi, you know that simulator that we developed 10 years ago? 12 years ago? Yeah, we're making another one. Of course they're not going to tell anyone until they tell anyone. Besides, PMDG is working closer with Lockheed Martin than they are with Microsoft. Anyway, I'm hoping that uh, Lockheed Martin get to keep this going. The sim that we're currently using right now. That'll be good. out of this annoying cloud once in a while.
a bit silly to ask if they're going to make a uh, airplane for a simulator that doesn't exist yet. So, when will you release the 747 for a simulator that doesn't exist? Uh, we don't know. <laughs> I mean, when has PNBG ever given a release date on anything? Have people not learnt yet? And then Sinopolis, yes, I will one day try x 11. Might be a year off yet, but one day. One day. Three thousand five pushing up into the twenty four hundred RPM. Eight degrees Celsius and we're going to need to enrich it next to the end. Hundred and fifteen knots, if you keep that. Doubt it. Oh, the High Priest, uh, we didn't really have any crash except uh, last Sunday we had Windows decide to update on its own and it uh, brought uh, P3D hanging down to about one frame every two, three seconds at points. So that was annoying. Look at that, 120 knots on the Cessna. Nice. I'm sure that's mostly residual from the <laughs> from the descent. But that's alright. Pretend that it's real. Now, where are these uh, airspace restriction things? Ah, no, they're not there. Menu. Map setup. Extension uh, restricted airspace is what I wanted. Airspace, there it is. Slide airspace is. Did I? Uh, there's a tiny little restricted airspace area just circling um, path through the telescope. I was just hoping that it would show up, but apparently not. I like the fact that Kudal is still there. YCUA is an old airfield called Kudal. It's not an airfield anymore. It has been turned into a tractor sales yard. Uh, the old Kendall Airlines used to actually be based there. Um, I think the Saab SF340, but before that they had. Uh, was it the Shorts? I don't remember. But one of the uh, maintenance bases was at Kudal. So it's like, ah, Kudal, it's a quite large airport in uh, regional western New South Wales. Well, it's no longer an airport. It's a nothing. It's a tractor. So, yeah. Uh, Nick Duffel, yes, this is the uh, Flight 1 uh, GTN650. And you have to buy that separately. Although it does come with a manager so you can uh, load it into the air-to-air -air panel. With very little fuss. 
what you do is open up uh, Airtoware Simulations in your start menu, click on 172 uh, Aircraft Configurator, and you'll get something like this. You click on GPS and you get to go from default Flight 1 650 or Flight 1 430, so on and so forth. And that's the 650. Although you do need to buy the Flight 1 product for that to work, we need to contact CETA. Traffic to Parks, Julie Kilo November is assessed on 172. 3,500, 10 miles just south of Parks Aerodrome. We'll be uh, entering downwind, runway 22. Traffic Parks. Ah, Traffic Parks, then we'll be at, uh, in the downwind at time 4 5. Okay. Fairchild Metros, they're an ugly aeroplane that would really annoy to fly. But yeah, that might have been the aeroplanes that they had there. Okay, the circuit IT is 2,000 feet. We are currently at 3,005. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the yellow pilot. Parks Township is seen. I think I've got the airfield. I'm not quite sure about that. Airfield is in sight. Runway 22, right about there. Good stuff. So we're coming in pretty much for a uh, straight entry into the downward. Hi Priest 25, yes, uh, voice unicorn, but it's not about the voice unicorn, it's about an entirely new uh, voice system, which is a range based instead of voice room based, and a much better codec without any delay. So I will hopefully be looking at that exact system on Sunday, if I have enough time. I've uh, signed up to the event, which will be at 11 p.m. at night or some stupid hour. Uh, so that means I'll probably just need to sleep for a lot of Sunday and uh, install some new software. But uh, they're actually changing the way voice system works on Vatsim entirely. So you can tune to any frequency and any airplane or controller that happens to be on that frequency within a certain range, you'll be able to talk to them. And if they're outside that range, you won't be able to talk to them. That's a distance calculation. And the other thing that's coming is the latency on the old codec is going away because the, there's a new codec. Much easier to understand and when you press the button down you're transmitting with no lag. Because at the moment there's about a one to two second lag on uh, voice transmissions. But there won't be anymore. Runways in sides. Truck Parks, uh, Julie Kill November is turning in downwind runway 22, uh, descending out of 2500, down to 2000. No, you can't have a better codec. Well, actually, you can because FSN will still be the, the client. Actually, no, FSN is going away. But one thing that you could not have with FSN is a better voice codec because you know you'd have the old version voice codec. So they will now have a new voice codec, which is clearer, easy to understand, easy to hear, and quicker to respond to you. There's no lag. FSN always had about two, between one and two second lag between when you say something and when anybody else hears it. Doesn't sound like much, but when you're in a busy airspace, it is. That's the biggest thing. The other stuff is essentially what we had with FSN. 
on the server side instead of on the client side. So you don't need to have special software to make it work. You just connect to that and it's working. Anyway, I do hope to uh, check it out on Sunday because I've signed up for the trial. Traffic Parks, Jump Kill November, turning base, runway 22. Laps 10. Traffic Parks, Julia Killer, November, final runway 22. Laps 30 coming up. Pretty much a headwind. Okay, brakes are released. Undercoat is fixed. Mixture is fully rich. Pressure is in the green. Fuel is set to both. See stars are secure. Five hundred. One dot. There we Okay, yeah, we're on the ground in the parks, just taxiing up, we'll uh, vacate and then we'll shut that down. I uh, need to vacate by Alpha all the way across runway 04. Another thing that I've been hearing is that uh, when you start to move outside of range, in the new system, you'll start getting more and more static until eventually cuts out and you want to get sign tone. And eventually not even that. So instead of having like inside this range you can, can contact the controller and outside you can't. What you eventually have is inside this range you can contact the controller and outside this range but before that range you can kind of hear the controller 
and after that it's nothing. Which will certainly make uh, oceanic crossings a little bit more interesting. Traffic parks, during the killer November has vacated runway 22. And all of the runways. No, my next live video I'm not going to do a helicopter because otherwise that'll go on the next bloopers video because I suck at helicopters. Okay, we're just going to park next to these guys. Let's drop that, that, and that, and that. There's some fuel bowsers over there. We'll need to uh, top up the fuel before we go next time. We'll do that on the next video. Okay, parking brakes are in. 1,000 RPM. Avionics are off. Shutting it down. Next across the pond is going to be the last week of uh, of October, the last Saturday in October, at eleven hundred Zulu. It's at the twenty fourth or something like that. I can't remember the date. 26, so the 26th of October. Yes, it is possible to fly gliders in the sim, and yes, you can get thermals as well. There's a whole system for that. So gliders with thermals is a possibility. And apparently there's some self-launch option as well. Uh, essentially a, a tow cable, but... It's not a physical tow cable, it's kind of like a virtual one. It's like, I want the tow cable to start here, and then it'll just pull you straight up. Um, I have heard that you can do towing in light aircraft. and you, There's a certain key that you press down to attach your aeroplane to another aeroplane, and it'll maintain the same distance, but no idea how that works. Not something I've ever done. Anywho, let's uh, do the old reverse walk around and get ourselves some... Um, Covers, some locks, some tie towns, and some wheel trucks. And we're done. Empty plane. There we go. Do you like Kilo November in parks? With any uh, luck, next flight we will be able to go and uh, check out the old uh, radio telescope. It depends on how bad or good the weather is, I suppose. There we go. Nice to get out there and just see the old telescope. See if it's there, see what it looks like. As I said, I've had some issues with this uh, scenery having some black textures around the airport. Might be that we have a black telescope. Or not. Yeah, not too much out there in Parks Airfield. We've just got some hangars. There's a little terminal building over there. And a few cars. That's about it. No Maccas, no Cave Rye. Don't know what a K-Fry is, that sounds 
specifically New Zealander. But yeah, I'll just go over and say hi to this dude. And borrow someone's car. Hi there, have you got a car? <laughs> we need to go and uh, catch an Uber into town. Maybe carjack one of these guys in the car park here. <laughs> Anywho, with that, do you kill November into good old uh, parks? Uh, I'm not sure what the next fight will be. As I said, we may be visiting um, Melbourne's White Knight event on Friday. So I might not get a chance to do a Friday fight. But if not, then we'll see you on the so-called Friday Night Ops at Phoenix, Arizona on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Till then... I've been Mr. Glaber, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for flying. And no, you can't do the walk around in FSX.